at Brigham Larson with Brigham Larson Pianos. This piano just came out of the shop, uh, I think last week, something like that. It was, we just uh, finished it up. It, this was in our shop for maybe two or three months, something like that. The total amount of time that we put into this piano was probably in the neighborhood of 100 to 150 hours. So this, is a, this was a, a, a massive project. And, and it turned out great. Um, it's a 1931 Apollo, <clears throat> little baby grand, that, uh, that cosmetically, why don't we start there, is gorgeous. It's been totally refinished and is just that beautiful ebony satin look. And this piano is gorgeous. You do not see, cosmetically, you do not see, or, or cabinetry-wise, pianos that, that are manufactured. You haven't seen them manufactured um, really since since this era. Occasionally there'll be one here and there, but but it's very very rare. Why don't we get let's get a shot of over here? It's just really pretty with those legs and, um, and uh, ornate cabinetry design work and the pedals. Pedals are beautiful, and the lyre, that's, the lyre is the term, spelled L-Y-R-E, that's the term for the, the thing that holds the pedals. So, um, so yeah, everything is just beautiful. Keys, so these keys are, we, we, we go one, when we rebuild pianos, we go one of two ways, depending. Um, on this piano, we restored we restored the ivory. So this is this is original ivory. Of course, ivory is elephant tusk. That's what it is. And so you can't get that now because it's totally illegal um, to harvest ivory for good reason. Um, but uh, there's, there, there are a lot of pianos still out there that have ivory, but very, very few have ivory that's in good enough condition that it's a good idea to restore it like we did here. And so, most pianos, the vast majority of pianos that we restore, the ivory is so far gone that we just tear it off and pulverize it. It's, you know, just pulverized into dust. But this piano, um, we decided to go the other way and, and because it was already pretty good. So we decided to clean it up and, and polish things, sand it down. It, it works kind of like wood in a lot of ways. Ivory does. <clears throat> and so so it's, in, it's in very good condition. Then the, uh, the sharps, we've restored the sharps as well. So, uh, oh, and then the last little cosmetic thing that I'll mention is, the, is this little decal here. Of course, that is not the original decal. This is a replica of what was there originally in 1931. So, cosmetically, the piano's beautiful. Absolutely gorgeous piano. And, uh, and a, a very unique well. Okay, that's the that's the cosmetics on the inside. Of course, we start with cleaning it. The cleaning alone is um, is a two to three day process. A major, I guess, feature of the, the cleaning process. We take the piano outside and we and we it's like sandblasting when we use baking soda. It gets down in there and cleans everything. It gets down into every little nook and cranny inside um, to, to clean it as well as we can. And we done that on this piano, of course we've done that in the action. The action is kind of the engine of the piano, it's the main mechanical heart of the piano. The hammers on this piano have been reshaped, so they they don't have the, um, the indentations that the hammers get after decades of use. And then what you're seeing there is it comes, each hammer comes to within an eighth of an inch and then it has that little bounce that's proper regulation. It should come to within an eighth of an inch of the string and then there's that little bump at the end of the note that I'm feeling with my finger as I push the key and the way that manifests on the hammer is it has that little bounce and it, and it doesn't actually hit the string. You have to give it a little bit of a little bit more than just kind of going down and clicking it at the, you know so, so that it actually hits the string. So there you have it. Um, every every hammer is is exactly an eighth of an inch of the string from, from when it when it 
does that. It's called letting off or escapement is another term for it. This uh, is kind of a unique design in the, um, in the music desk here. The way you can slide it forward and back, you can have it all the way back like this if you want, or slide it anywhere forward like that. Kind of a, kind of a unique little design. So then, uh, the other the other kinds of things that we do, um, we we bolster the knuckles, um, which my action model looks like is back in the shop right now. But basically, the the knuckles are what are what receive um, kind of a beating in the action, and so we restore those knuckles to the proper rounded shape, just like the hammers. They get a beating from hitting the strings. We restore those to the proper rounded shape. We lubricate everything, tighten everything, align everything. So it's, and, and then the regulation is what I was talking about. There's about a dozen procedures. Getting it up to that eighth of an inch of the string before that is that little bump. That's just one of about a dozen or so procedures involved in, in proper regulation. And then uh, we voiced this this piano to get it um, to get it nice and nice and consistent. Of course, it's up to pitch, up to A440, and it's tuned. And then, of course, the pedals the pedals are, are functioning correctly. It's a nice, very nice projection, especially for a for a baby grand. A lot of baby grands lack this kind of um, power. functionality standpoint, no question that this piano could serve um, to teach kids <laughs> um, for really to take them take them through their entire musical education. The touch is really nice, it's very responsive and it and it projects well with, without a doubt. A lot of um, I, I mentioned that only to only to emphasize that a lot a lot of people when they're when they're looking to make a piano purchase they kind of feel like they have to choose one or the other. They have to choose, okay, I want something really unique and cool and maybe even artsy, design-oriented like this one, or they have to choose um, you know, a piano like this that's gonna functionally be perfect, but many people, particularly those that, are, that have a, a penchant towards the designy kinds of pianos, that piano, a lot of people, that those kind of people think think those panels are sterile looking, just kind of boring and boxy and black and shiny and plasticky looking. Um, so, but the advantage here is you don't have to choose one or the other. You get both in one. And uh, it was a very fun project to restore this old 1931 Apollo. So uh, come check it out and see what you think if you like it. Uh, the the address here is 1497 South State Street or you can call the store and see if this one's still available at 801-701-0113. Thanks for watching.